Turn your Bibles to uh, Luke chapter 10. I don't really have to uh, introduce myself. Most of you guys should know me. (laughs) At least I would hope so. Um, But turn your Bible uh, to Luke chapter 10. Um, (laughs) um, When I first was trying to write this outline and write the message, I was like, um, and I heard my dad say, you know, I'm asking the Lord to, you know, do what he did yesterday. You know, everything went connected and they all, it was all smooth. Um, as far as like the message, it was almost like, like he said, like they were meant to just be together. Um, and I was like thinking about what I had um, planned to say. And I was like, I don't think that really goes with <laughs> what, you know, they're trying to do. Um, But then, as I was really thinking about it, um, I just had a perspective, and it actually does. Um, We're going to pray here in a a second, Um, but Luke chapter 10, it has to do with, well, it's the story of the mission of the 70, and what they were called and sent to do. Um, But first, uh, let's pray and ask God to um, be with the next few moments that I have. Dear Lord, thank you. um, for the wonderful conference that has already been put into place, Lord. Thank you um, that the week's not over and that there are several more days that we have of this conference left, Lord. Um, Thank you for the guest preacher being able to um, preach to us um, from your word, Lord. Um, Thank you for the music, Lord. Um, Thank you for um, just the grace and mercy that we each have um, received. And um, thank you for all of us being able to attend here, those who are here, and uh, help those who are not. Help the live stream, Lord. Um, just help us to be God-honoring today, Lord, and tonight. And, uh, help us to have a great rest of the service and do, Lord. Amen. Luke chapter 10, verse number 1. It says, uh, After these things the Lord appointed another seventy also, and sent them two by two before his face, into every city and place, whether he himself would come. The reason it says, um, uh, and uh, the reason it says, and the, th- and after these things, the Lord appointed another seventy. It was because recently, in recent chapters, He had also already sent a couple people, you know, uh, equipped the disciples to do some certain uh, certain things already. So it's talking about ne- another seventy. It's talking about a different group of people that were not already sent. And uh, we find in verse number two, He says, "Therefore said He unto them, The harvest truly is great." But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. People often use that verse and are like, you know, pray for, pray for, pray for, and that's exactly what it means. Pray for laborers. Um, But it actually, in the context, is literally talking about Jesus just sent away people into the harvest. And oftentimes I feel like this is just me, you know, as a kid, even though I wouldn't admit it. This is me as a kid. I feel like there's so many churches that are so big, but there's so many people in the churches. I feel like some of them should be trying to start other churches. That's just me. Maybe that's their plan to be there. But as a kid, I feel like our, our the group of people that we have here, we should be sending people. So the larger we are, the more people we should be sending. And Jesus didn't have a large group. Jesus did not have a large group, but the group that he did have, he sent away. Even he sent the disciples away as well. If you, if you read a couple chapters back, he, uh, in chapter 9, he sends the disciples away, yep. and they came back. And that's exactly what these people are going to do. We're going to see um, uh, later on in the chapter. Verse number 3, Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor script, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, Peace be in this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, be, uh, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall, re- it shall turn to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking, such things as they have. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not house from house. Pretty much what that just says right there is, go into a city, don't worry about anything, I will provide, go into the house, 
And if the house, you know, if there's peace in the house, if they let you into the house, then your peace will rest upon that house. Whatever they put in front of you, eat it. And, um, and pretty much don't go from house to house, you know, picking and choosing. Oh, I like that house a lot. You know, no. Stay in one house. If they've received you, stay in that house and eat and drink there. Uh, verse number eight. And whatsoever city ye enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. This is the twice, uh, twice Jesus said, whatever they give you, eat. And we're going to find out later in the Bible <laughs> that he says, you know, whatever I call clean, don't call unclean. Yeah. Um, we're just going to leave that at that. Uh, but verse number nine, it says, and heal the sick that are therein, and say unto him, uh, and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But in what, uh, but into whatsoever city ye enter, and receive, and they receive you not, go your way. Out into the streets of the same, and say, even the very dust of your city which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this: that the kingdom of God is nigh unto you. In both instances, instances, the kingdom of God is nigh to both cities. Both the city that received him and both the city that received them not, the kingdom is nigh to both of them. That's what Jesus has told them to tell them. The, city, uh, the kingdom of God is nigh to both the, kingdom, uh, both the cities that received them and the cities that received them not. Um, one through nine, I don't really like writing outlines because I feel like I'm just not smart enough to. Um, <laughs> but I didn't. I did. Um, uh, didn't have an outline here. And in verse one through nine, I call it the mission, and that mission is actually, literally, of Jesus Christ. Literally sent the seventy on a mission, two by two, into separate towns, into separate houses, and has given them a job to do, in those cities. And I feel like our mission here is to go church, uh, church by church and go into the cities and try to reach those people for you. Uh, for him, I mean. Verse number, uh, verse number 11 says, uh, sorry, verse number 12 says, But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For, in, uh, for if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you, they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. I find this a little bit humorous because um, Jesus is just kind of a funny person. Um, oftentimes he says things and it startles those around him, shocks those around him, amazes those around him. And um, we look back and read it. And some of, well, me, I like to laugh because oftentimes he does just really things that people don't do. Um, there was one time where he's walking in, the, the crowd is looking for him and he's walking in the crowd. Like, like, and I remember, I, I actually remember preaching from that text and like pretending like he was just like some ninja or something. But I feel like he was like, somebody's, uh, look at me and I'm looking for Jesus. And then Jesus hits me and I'm like, Jesus, where's Jesus? Like, <laughs> He was literally walking among you and you couldn't find him. Like, that's just, yeah. like Pastor said last night, as he was going to walk, like, as if he was literally going to walk by the boat. Like, this, the, the stuff he does and says is just so funny. But this one, this is funny, but it's kind of like one of those kind of like sad because it's true yeah. type of things. Um, yes, there's a little bit of humor there, but at the same time, it is Kind of, it's kind of in a sad sense. He says that if this wicked city of old, if your works were being done in their city, they would have repented a long time ago. That is absolutely insane. That's like if the deeds that are being done in California were being done in Texas, Texas would have repented a long time ago. I mean, it's just crazy how wicked that a city is and then the next generation... It's just getting worse. Yep. And that's exactly what we're seeing today, where Jesus is like, if that wicked yeah. place and wicked acts were being done yeah. anywhere else, yeah. they, would have been, they, would have had, they would have been done with it a long time ago. Right. And we see in verse number um, 14, but it shall be more tolerable for, tri uh, for Tyre and Sidon 
at judgment than for you. Jesus lets them know, like, you know, that wicked city that is used for moms trying to scare their children into going to sleep, it's going to be more tolerable for them than it's going to be for you. That's exactly what we're seeing today. We're seeing places where it's like, (laughs) I think Sodom and Gomorrah is going to have a little bit more fun during Judgment Day than California because we are just going trash. We're just doing weird stuff that I don't even understand. Um, and it's, it's and these are words from Jesus even. I mean, he, he knows what's going to happen. He's like, it's going to be a little bit better for them than it is for you. Verse number 15, and thou Capernaum, which art exalted to heaven, shall be thrust down into hell. Even the cities that seemingly are exalted as if they are the highest and they've reached the peak of anything that you could think of. And God's like, nah. No. You're going to be thrust down into hell. Verse number 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. He's, talking, he's not talking about the cities. He's now talking about the 70. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. Wow. A lot of people tell, a lot of people say, you know, oh, you know, oh, I love Jesus and all that stuff. Or I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. No, if you believe in Jesus, then you believe in God. If you don't believe in Jesus, then you don't believe in God. Yeah. There's, no dif- there's no difference there. If you believe one, you believe both. If you believe that one isn't real, then you believe they're not. But they're both not real. There's no, there's no trying to change it. There's, they're literally the same. Verse number seventeen. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, "Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through Thy name." Verse number, uh, verse number ten through sixteen. I like to call the mad because it is kind of interesting how Jesus. Res- responds and talks about these cities and how wicked they are um, and how Jesus but you have to realize in the context Jesus is sending those people to those cities people are constantly talking about how they're leaving California and I was like I was talking to my sister I was uh, I was saying I was like man I said I want to get out of here I want to California is just dumb and then she was like well if everybody that's good leaves then who's left all the wicked people, like that's real smart. And I was like, "But I don't want to live in California. <laughs> like, I don't care." <laughs> um, no, I. <sighs> um, but she was she was trying she was trying to tell me if all the witnesses, if the two by two from the seventy, get out of the boat. Who's left? Yep. Yeah. If those who know how to steer the boat leave the boat and pretend they're putting down their anchors <laughs> and leave the boat, then who's going who's gonna to steer the boat? Yeah. Who knows how to steer the boat? Not that they wouldn't. Who knows how? And I, I feel like that's what we see here. God's telling them they're not going to believe you. He's already letting them out, out of the gate. They're not going to believe you. But I'm sending you there anyways. Verse number 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you. We see um, in verse number 17 through 20, what I call the mentality. They come back, the 70 have come back from their journey, from their mission, just like the disciples did. They came back after after they were done and said, Lord, and they were rejoicing with joy. Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Like, literally, we can do anything. (laughs) Ha! Like, literally, the, the devils, they, they got nothing on me. 
But he's like, hold on. Hold your horses. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written yes. in heaven. Yes. These are uh, missionaries that were sent by Jesus himself who were saying, you know, here I am, send me. And he sends them. And some of them, they go into house to house eating burritos, having the greatest time of their lives. Others have to shake the dust off their feet and walk away. But all of them came back and all of them had the power over devils. All of them could do the same thing, but God tells each one of them whether they had a great time or whether they had some of the worst times of their life. That they ought to rejoice that they know they're going to hell. Yes. Yeah. It does not matter who you are, where you're from, what you've done. In any positive or negative way. Rejoice that Jesus Christ yeah. is going to see you in heaven. Yeah. And that you're going to walk the streets of gold. But it also uh, implies the other way. It does not matter who has hurt you. It does not matter who has rejected you. It does not matter who has despised you. Rejoice in the salvation God has given you. Verse number 23, it says, the verse number 23, And he turned unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things ye have seen. I'm going to take this a little bit outside of the context and say, we're going to see some stuff <coughs> as we're sent. In whatever city that we are called into, we're going to see some things, whether good or bad. But Jesus is saying, don't, just because you've seen the greatest times of Baptist history or because we're seeing the worst times, rejoice in salvation. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about what we have. Verse number 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. It's not about what we have or what power, I should say. It's about salvation. And thank God, no matter what city you're going to, no matter if the entire city gets saved like Nineveh, or no matter if you like Lot and you have to run and don't turn back, rejoice in your salvation. Amen. Pastor. Amen. Oops. No, praise the Lord. You know what? Where that came from? Little brothers, little Harold brothers. I didn't come today when I asked him a couple hours ago. That's right. Yeah. I came from his secret place. Yeah. And I'm not trying to embarrass him, but God's doing something on the inside of him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh man, I want to preach.